Today, Genetic Analysis have published their report for the third quarter of 2022. And joining me, me here today on link, I have its CEO and CCO. It's Ron, Ronny Hermansen and Anita Patel-Jusnes. How are you both? We're fine, thank you. How are you? Thank you. I am fine. I am fine <laughs> myself. Uh, you just released a report as well. How does that feel? Uh, yeah, it feels good. You know, um, if I can summarize the quarter, we are continue to build momentum for future revenue growth. Um, I mean, we were a little bit affected by the summer holiday, which we expected. Uh, because in Europe, you know, July and August are quite quiet months. But we grew about 34% on the sales compared to last year, quarter by quarter. And the operating income was more than uh, 100% above last year. Uh, and what kind of encouraged my heart especially is that we continue to place systems into the labs. And that is very important because that will generate uh, future revenues mm. for yeah so very happy with the quarter all in all mm. if we go over the numbers real quick as you said yourself operating income almost doubled from uh, 2.3 million uh, norwegian crowns to 4.8 uh, net loss more or less remained the same however was that also in line with your expectations yes it was i would say so we had a little bit higher cost maybe than expected, but I will come back to that. So uh, all in all, we are pretty uh, in line with our expectations. Indeed, the outlier in your uh, in your income statement is other expenses. In Q3 2021, this amounted to 1.9 million uh, Norwegian crowns, but this quarter it amounted to 4.8. Uh, where was this rooted? Yes. Um, we have a project in in our pipeline to develop new diagnostic marker for ibd a uh, very exciting marker and we have a very good progress in our clinical studies these studies are performed by external parties and uh, the cost increase reflects the progress they have uh, seen during especially third quarter and uh, second quarter so but so it kind of been invoiced now in the in the third quarter Tell us a little bit more about these uh, IVDs, because I read it in the report, but I had a little hard time understanding the Luminex NX tag uh, enabled MagPix instruments. Could you talk, uh, tell us more about this? Yeah, first, maybe I can just say that um, uh, today we have developed our test on the Luminex instrument platforms. And uh, the, uh, the, the, we have expanded our CE mark to also cover the NX tag instrument uh, during the quarter, which is very important. And Anita can maybe tell us a little bit more about uh, that instrument and, and uh, especially so, so European. Sure, sure because uh, the, the instrument we were currently running on is at one cost level and the MagPix is on a different cost level, I would say. And this makes it easier for labs to invest in a cheaper instrument like the NX tag. That's the that's the main story and the reason why we did it. So we can get more traction uh, from the labs uh, who wants to invest. So uh, we are broadening our instrument park in a way uh, with the same technology. And this is a positive news. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, uh, forgive me, again, go on. Again, building a, a very, very exciting momentum for the future, not only doing instrument placements, but also as Anita say, broadening the instrument park. Indeed, and uh, you said it yourself that you're very satisfied with this quarter installations of your uh, G, uh, GA map platform to labs specifically this quarter uh, selling to a UK based uh, based lab. Uh, this marks your fourth consecutive quarter with sales in your GA map platform. Uh, but tell us more about the customer in this particular case. So we're happy to announce that uh, UK is one of the big five markets uh, in Europe, as you know, and, and to be uh, our first placement in a research-based lab will make a major impact, we think, into the market penetration in UK. And uh, this lab is also uh, very focused on academic research, and we think that we have got a great partner now in the UK that we will build more on and, uh, and establish ourselves in the UK. And the identity of this partner is this something shareholders will one day learn about yes i'm sure they will right now we cannot disclose it 
Of course. Uh, but I'm curious to the momentum that uh, Ronnie was so proud of. Uh, is this, uh, has this effect been relating anything to COVID-19 restrictions? Sure. Uh, I think we've been more present and visible at conferences and having face-to-face -face meetings. We've been to the U.S., had road trips. Uh, all this is helping, obviously. But also that uh, the pandemic is given us two major opportunities in terms of molecular lab testing. Now we see more and more labs got a lot of revenues coming from COVID testing. You can imagine the whole world have been COVID, COVID tested. So, I mean, these revenues and this sales is now invested in new technologies. So we're feeling that there's an opportunity in many labs because they have money to invest. That's the first one. And the second one th that we are looking at is that many labs have already invested in PCR machines and also extraction uh, machines. So the instruments are already there. So we've been talking to many labs globally after the, the COVID uh, restrictions lifted. And, and we see a lot of uh, labs now being almost fully equipped to take on GMAP. But what of the uh, the uh, the places where COVID restrictions really hasn't disappeared? I'm talking, of course, about China, where you're currently wishing to establish yourself. How is that project uh, undergoing? It's a very good question, and you're right. Uh, it's not every mar uh, market or country that has uh, been fully open, like China, is not open yet. But despite that, we're happy to announce that we started our technology transfer remotely. So we developed a digital e-learning platform called GMAP Playbook, which has worked superb. So they are actually ready to test uh, GMAP technology and, and have their healthy cohort study being completed by the end of this year, despite we not being able to travel or they have not met us. So it's, a, quite it's, a, it's quite an impressive uh, work uh, during the pandemic, but uh, and also that we are on track uh, mm -hmm. with the timelines. Mm -hmm. We were right. delayed a bit in the beginning, but now we, 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 we see the momentum picking up in China and we've done the training, as I said, so they are actually good to go with the study uh, analysis. Yeah. So so we are on track with mm -hmm. China. As we uh, read further into report, weight is given to the FDA uh, approvals of mi microbiota-based drugs in uh, the CO letter. Uh, this, you claim, will have significant impact on the diagnostics within the field. Uh, how so? Well, as you probably have uh, read in our report also, is that uh, Rebiotics, a fully owned subsidiary of Farring Group, has now got the thumbs up from FDA uh, on approval for their new uh, microbiome altering drug for Clostridium difficile. And this is, of course, the first company that has gotten that. So it's, it's, it, it kind of, it colors the whole industry here because um, it means a lot to the patients. It means a lot to the pharma industry, of course, and it means a lot to the diagnostics industry, so everybody. Uh, the fact is that uh, you will now be able to modify your microbiome. And, uh, and by putting these patients on these drugs, of course, where is diagnostics? Because up to now, uh, analyses have been performed much more on the research-based uh, platforms and, 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 and systems. But also the pharma industries now say that we need diagnostics into this field uh, because patients need to be selected, they need to be followed up, monitored to see if the drugs are working, should they you know, double the dose, etc., etc. So I think this marks a very, very important stepping stone for the microbiome industry as a total. Uh, by having this thumbs up from the FDA. There will be more. There are a lot of companies out there who are developing microbiome altering drugs for various uh, indications for use. Tell us a little bit more about Reb uh, Rebiotics in particular. Is this a company that you have uh, talked to before or have any relation to? Yes, we are, of course, uh, uh, we know a lot of companies in this industry and Rebiotics is a company we are been working with for some years, yeah. How does this open the door now for potentially more partnerships in other drug uh, drug companies that are currently undergoing the FDA, uh, FDA applica applications? 
Well, we are positive and hope for uh, more co- collaborations, definitely. I cannot say anything more. As we not. might be mm. worth mentioning uh, that we are part of the MT group. Yes. The mole- uh, microbiome mm. therapeutic innovation group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is also run or chaired by uh, the CEO or the the um, the leader of uh, Rebiotics. So mm. uh, the, there is a group in the well, it's global now, mm. but it started up in the US. A group that is a microbiome therapeutics innovation group, and that group will of course uh, work towards better, what should I say, conditions for the for the microbiome industry, uh, and also to just announce that the first company, diagnostics company that was invited into this group was genetic analysis. And of course, there are other pharma companies there. So we do have a connection with them during uh, also uh, in in this group. Then, Of course, then I suppose the only question that remains is what can shareholders expect now that we move towards the end of the year and into the new year? Yeah, we will continue, of course, to place systems. So um, GMAP system placements are very important for us into labs. Uh, we will work uh, towards uh, new agreements, cannot say more than that, with uh, distributors, with uh, labs and other partners. Uh, and then we will, uh, during the end of this year or by the end of this year, we, we really are on track to, to have our research use only a diagnostic tool for uh, prognostics of IBD patients ready. So this is very important for us. So this is 2022 and going into 2023, we will continue our work towards system placements. That's that's really important to build further momentums. Uh, and we will um, work on uh, other collaboration opportunities, I would say in general terms. So to grow grow the business and building a solid fundament for future growth. Anita Patel, Yusnes and Ronnie Hermansen. That was all my questions, but I thank you very much for your time and wish both of you continued luck in the future. Thank Thank you. you, Michael.